I want to talk about um, some of the different causes of infertility. Um, first, why don't we talk about men? Okay, I suppose when we speak about men, we speak about um, subfertility and sterility. Mm -hmm. So uh, with men, we're looking at the sperm. Uh, is there no sperm? Uh, and we would always repeat a semen analysis if we got a result showing no sperm, azoospermia. But if there's no sperm in the ejaculate versus if there's a, a poor sperm parameters. So the um, subfertility would be somebody that had poor sperm parameters. And we look at a range of different factors. We look at the count, how many sperm there are, mm -hmm. how, how, they, how they move, whether they're moving in, in, a, in, a, in a direction or they're doing circles and going nowhere fast. The, the, the um, percentage that are alive how they appear, which seems to relate to the ability of the sperm to, to penetrate and fertilize the egg, mm -hmm. and whether they're antibodies against the sperm. Those are the typical factors that we look in a semen analysis, and um, if those factors are not optimal, um, we can try and improve that. A, a, a gentleman who has azospermia, who is, is sterile, could be due to a range of reasons, three reasons really, which is, is there some form of obstruction, the sperm is being produced but it's not coming out in the ejaculate. Okay. Is there a failure of the sperm production within the testes or is the brain not sending the right communication to the testes? And we would analyze those uh, in order to see what, what treatment options are available uh, to the particular person. And how common is it for a male to be infertile or to experience one of the three? Yeah, I think we, I think we see that uh, in couples that are struggling to conceive, about 30% is due to a male factor. Not all of those are going to be um, st uh, sterility, azoospermia, but some of those, about 30% of couples struggling to conceive, a male factor would be contributing. Okay, and let's move on to the women. Um, what are some causes of infertility in women? For a woman to conceive, there are three things that really needs to be happening. She needs to be ovulating, mm -hmm. so releasing an egg. The egg needs to get taken up by a fallopian tube, right. fertilized by a partner's sperm, and then it needs to implant in the uterus. So if there's a problem with ovulation, um, and common causes for that would be obesity, mm -hmm. and, in, and, and a condition which is increasing prevalence is polycystic ovarian syndrome, but certain medications and certain um, endocrine abnormalities can lead to failure to ovulate okay. or there can be a tubal factor or a pelvic factor and the strongest or the most common cause there would be uh, sexually transmitted infections or pelvic inflammatory disease. Other conditions like endometriosis can also cause scarring or infections like uh, an appendicitis that hadn't been, hadn't been correctly managed can cause uh, scarring and damage to the tubes. Okay, so how long should a couple um, wait to see a doctor um, if they think that one of the pair may be infertile? The strongest factor um, influencing a woman's chance of conceiving would be her age. Okay. Women are born with a fixed finite number of eggs that are declining in time in both quantity and quality. Women under the age of 35, uh, their chance of conceiving each month with regular unprotected sex would be about 20%. And 85% of couples would have conceived within a year. The definition of infertility is failure to conceive after a year of trying. So for a woman less than 35, we would suggest she tries for a year. Mm -hmm. But because of the influence of age, we don't want to delay in women older than 35. We would evaluate after six months. And if you have a known condition, you've, you've been to a gynecologist and you know you have a problem like endometriosis or fibroids or polycystic ovarian syndrome, then there's no point in waiting because those conditions can impact on your fertility and you should rather be evaluated sooner.